the 12th of October 1941. The crew of U-552 have once again been ordered back to the Black Pit, sector BE-2 to BE-5 in the northeast Atlantic. Our patrol is to transverse 2,250 kilometers within inside those sectors and sink any enemy merchant shipping that we see. A minimum of 7,000 tons have been sighted by the BDU. However, intelligence has anticipated the number of vessels going through this area is only expected to be small. Furthermore, intelligence has given us information. The battleship Nelson was recently seen in this area and if encountered, it would be a priority to try and sink the battleship for the morale of the German people. Hi everyone, right, the alarm's going off. Um, a U-boat is reported on our, we haven't quite made our sectors to patrol, but we got a report that there's smoke columns being seen in this area. Uh, and so we dive down, and there they are. There they are, as per our fellow captain's statement in the message. There they are indeed, smoke columns. Now this one, that probably an escort, judging by how they are moving. You know, if they're going straight up, it's just, obviously it's slow moving, unless the wind speed is really high. It's going to be a slow moving ship. If you've got him like that, that's a fast moving ship, which is most likely going to be a warship. Um... So yeah, okay, that's, there you go, maximum zoom. It's like a corvette coming towards us. Can't really tell. There's a couple of merchant ships in here. So yeah, we maybe I'll have a pop on our way to our patrol zone. Obviously, it, when we got reports of a convoy being sighted, I had to check it out with the possibility of the battleship Nelson being out here somewhere. You know, we've we've had these reports before and we've never found anything. But it's always worth having a look, isn't it? Uh, this is... Uh, hopefully it doesn't go sail in front of us. We want to stop now, really, and um, bring the periscope down a little bit and just track them for the hydrophone for a little bit, I think. Okay, welcome back. Looking at the hydrophone... Um, Corvette? We think that's a Corvette, the leading one, isn't it? Destroyer. Two merch, three merchants here. Corvette, 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 Corvette. Oof. Uh, that is a high ratio of escorts to three transport ships. And what's more, there's another small group of ships behind them. Um, now, considering they don't look anything special, there's no messages we've received that there's any important cargo on any of these merchant ships um the ratio of destroyers and corvettes to merchant ships makes me think this is probably not worth our time and effort at the moment it's it's one of those things that we may be able to sink one possibly two if we get it well if we get our ambush well but we're going to have five or six um, uh, destroyers and escorts over us trying to sink us for the next hour or so which is going to delay our rendezvous with um, our mission and uh, potentially um, some easier targets or potentially more value targets like the the battleship Nelson which has been uh, mentioned so uh, I think I'm just going to have a watching brief on this one uh, we're not going to engage um it's just not worth the risk. There's there's too much to lose and very little to be gained. So we're going to let this with these ones go. But yeah, it's interesting just to see the the ratio of escorts to uh, merchant ships there. Okay, welcome back everyone. Right, we've got a contact. However, they're moving quite um, erratically. And the reason for that is, I think there's also a U-boat in this area which is uh, causing them to, well, zigzag. So is that? That's the ship, but we can't see it due to the mist. Okay, we need to close in a little bit more and see if, well, hopefully the other U-boat doesn't sink it and uh, we can get our 
first kill of this patrol. Okay, there it is. There it is. Um, can we make out what it is? It is an empire. I think it's. Yeah, an empire tower. We'll recognize that. Try and see what the start of the hollers. Just the silhouette on the out, uh, outer reaches of our vision. Look at that. That's quite ghostly. Don't disappear into the fog. Do not disappear into the fog. Actually, this could be the case of surface and deck gun. Um, with the U-boat in the area, um, she's not going to be going in a straight line. So making a torpedo calculation will be a challenge visibility is a challenge so actually I've made the decision we'll surface the boat and charge at her firing the deck gun she's on her own so there's no other worries the, the fog will hopefully keep enemy aircraft away um, so we should be safe enough to uh, attack on the surface let's surface the boat Okay, there's that ship. Put some fires in. Put some fires in. Put some um, shells in. Around the funnel. Try to get some uh, fires from the boiler room. Hear the alarms going off on that ship now. We've only got armor piercing once again. That's all they had back at base. Try to put some holes in the hull. Get the water rushing in as well. It's a little bit choppy today, but um, not too bad. So put some holes around the funnel. Hopefully, uh, cause some fires going on. It's a little bit high at the moment. Just need to try and get right on that water line. Yeah, that's a bit better. That's a bit better. Crew is strained and stressed, apparently. Thank you for that exercise. I'll uh, take that uh, and deal with that in due course. Oh, what would what I wouldn't do for a few armor? Sorry, it's a high explosive rounds now to get the deck on fire. There we go. That was a good one. Right on the water line. So more at the rear. The rear of the ship obviously tends to be quite weak, and it also houses the uh, the pillars and the drive shafts. And... Oh, one of the uh, things is about to topple. Timber. There we go. Finally, got a fire from the boiler room. Let's try and compound that by a few more shells going into that direction. Yeah, it's fires looking around the bridge now. Fantastic. Oh, they got it out on the uh, the rear deck. I think she's sinking. Definitely towards the rear. We may have annoyed our fellow U boat captain who is in the area. But uh, although there is a competition, we're all, we're all playing for the same team. Empire Defiance. Wait for the life rafts. There they go. 
she's abandoned. Yes. Good. Our first kill of the uh, patrol. With the deck gun, all our torpedoes are still on board. There she goes. Fantastic. I can see two life rafts. So um, we'll go and offer some assistance. Uh, see if anybody wants to come aboard. If not, we'll offer some blankets and some food so they can try and survive out here in the Atlantic until rescue comes. On the 25th of October 1941 at 17.13 uh, in the afternoon, convoy in sight, Naval Square AM898, course 256 degrees 7 knots. This message is followed by a bearing signal so we can track the source for as long as the transmission stays active. Well, that may be worth uh, having a look at now that we've completed our patrol and we didn't spot anything in it. That ship we attacked previously was just outside our patrol. So, uh, yeah, we are free to hunt, so we can definitely see if we can pick up this convoy and uh, see if it's uh, within our range to be able to get there effectively in time. Welcome back, everyone. Later on that morning, we found another lone steamer. Uh, I think we might just try and finish off with the deck and again keep our torpedoes uh, intact. It's a little bit choppy, but... Um it's a clear view. I may approach um, periscope depth just to give us the option of, of both tactics because um, we haven't got that many shells left. I think I was only 33. Um, should be enough for this one, but uh, yeah, it's uh, as you can see, the weather's improved. It's a nice clear day. Aircraft could certainly come to the rescue of this ship, so uh, yeah, we'll approach it cautiously. Okay, there it is. Let's lock, lock on. It's uh, it's another tower. Get the velocity. I'm going to put a bet down of seven knots. Call me crazy, but that tends to be what they are. Uh, we need to get this torpedo away pretty quick. She seems to be going in a straight line. So, um, Empire Trumpet. There we go. We identified the name. One of the things that we'll need to dispatch her quickly and quite quietly because there's apparently a large convoy behind us. So I'd like to turn around and have a look at that for sure. Um, we don't want to give any radio messages away though because that would get that convoy, they go seven knots, up high alert and um, that will not be good for our stealth and uh, being able to ambush them by surprise. Alright, 2.5 kilometers. Right, let's get this ready. Right, 119. Right, let's get to Widow 2. One flooded. It's not a great angle, so we'll fire one. Fire. Draft is 8.5 meters. Is it worth putting one at 9 meters? Magnetic fire. Send it. Right, two torpedoes away. Um, let's get moving as well. And if need be, we can jump up on the deck gun and try and finish her off that way. Well, that was brutal. Two torpedo hits and the ship has gone within seconds. That is perfectly what we wanted. We didn't want a large group of ships seems to be a convoy. That's the one I'm talking about. So 
unlikely they managed to get a radio transmission away that quickly. Um, so we should still be hidden. And now we can go and turn our attention to whatever that large convoy is behind us. Right, we found the convoy. Large group of uh, smoke blowing up. Um, let's bring the snorkel down. It's kind of an obvious thing. We don't need them to be spotting that. Even though the, w the water is quite choppy. So it should disguise us a little bit. Right, what we got? Risk a little bit more height. Looks like we've got a destroyer up front. Oh, one of those four. Yeah, one of those four. I can't remember what they're called now. What else we got? We got a um, merchant ship there. Merchant ship. Ooh, a nice um, C3 freighter, Liberty freighter, an oil tanker, very nice indeed. That's certainly something we're going to have a look at. Another destroyer. Hang on a minute. That looks a bit bigger than a destroyer, that looks like a cruiser. That is a cruiser. Ooh, like, is that a county class cruiser? Corvette destroyer cruisers. County class, I think it is. We got a county class cruiser. Well, hello. It's not quite the battleship Nelson, but uh, we also have a destroyer. Who's a little bit closer than I would like. Oh, hello. Now we know why there's a cruiser. They've got a bat, uh, oh, aircraft carrier. Ooh, hello. Okay, so this is not. What else we got? Is that it? Okay. We've got a cruiser and an aircraft carrier. We've got s merchant ship over there, and I can't make out what that is. Right. Okay. Let's have a look on the hydrophone. See how this is all placed out. Right. Here we are then. Um, so this is one of the destroyers. So the cruiser and the battleship. That's, I keep saying battleship because we're on the hunt for the Nelson. Uh, the aircraft carrier it must be in here somewhere. So what I might do is. Try and wait for this destroyer to go past and then sneak behind so we get a little bit closer. And these are probably the oil tankers and the C2 freighters, C3 freighters that we have a look at, which are also very tempting targets, but not compared to a cruiser or an aircraft carrier. Okay, oh, hello. Aircraft are going up. I think they've spotted us. Uh, I just brought the. Um, should we have a quick pop at the cruiser as we're here? We know it's a county class cruiser. Speed. I want to get a salvo away at that uh, the stop calling it a battleship. The aircraft carrier. I've got some sort of mental block here today. Th thankfully they put a flag on the end of the uh, ship so we can see where it is. So it is seven knots. Okay, fair enough. Range. Three point seven kilometers. It's a bit of a long shot that. Okay, and it's sixty three degrees. What I might do, what's the, the hull? Uh five point two meters. So if we set Ruhe eins bewässern. Magnetic. Five and a half. Ruhe eins bewässert. Fire. Los! Auf See Tiefe. Ruhe zwei bewässern. Oh, drei. And we'll send these on the surface. Oh, two, fertig. Oh, three, bewässert. Fire. Los. Right. We got a little bit of time before the uh, anywhere near the aircraft carrier. Uh, so we're going to dive a little bit, thirty meters, and then try and maneuver a little bit better.
uh, we've positioned. We've now come back up to periscope depth. And in front of us, if we got this right, oh, oh she's, right, she's right in front of us as well, is the aircraft carrier. Right. Um, I think they've only got one type of escort carrier. They've got the illustrious style. Um, let's get her locked in. Indomitable. Right, what's her speed? Chance a little bit more. Auf zero, Tiefe. Is it that bit or is it where it goes into the water? Okay, I think they just started opening up on us. We know where we are. Four knots. Distance. Point blank range, basically. So slow, I can't. Come on, come on, come on. I might as well do this on the hydrophone and be quicker. About there. 600 meters, crikey. Just throw, throw, it, throw everything we got out of there. Right. Let's get everything flooded. Fire. Tube one away. Okay, we're diving down, as you can imagine, as fast as we can. Everything is heading in our direction uh, after claiming a cruiser and, more importantly, the aircraft carrier Indomitable. Um, the Royal Navy is going to be really angry at us. So we are going down as quick as we can, coming past 90 meters now, trying to get basically down into the red Wondered. before all the uh, descending cruisers, uh, corvettes and destroyers get to our location directly above us depth charges have been dropped you can hear them coming down we're not quiet as we can be at the moment we are just still trying to race down sounds like they're slightly shallow they're getting closer They're getting very close. But they seem to be going off slightly into that direction. Maybe not. Yeah, they're over there now. 130. Keep going down. Okay, that one depth charge attack missed us. 
a little bit more comfortably this time, thank goodness. We're down to 150 meters. We haven't been pinged with sonar, so we're just going to try and stay quiet down here for the moment. Obviously, if sonar starts pinging, then um, we'll have to go a little bit deeper and try and dodge them. Hi everyone, a little bit of time has passed and the majority of the escorts have given up and decided to um, go back to protecting the convoy which is great. However, they've left a corvette in the area just to see if, um, well just to keep us under the water I suppose. Yeah, if we're under the water we move slower, that means that they can move the convoy along um, away from us and we become, they nullify our, our threat basically by keeping us under the water. Um, so that's what they've done. They've left this one Corvette here uh, while the others are returning to the convoy. So um, I'm making a break north, hopefully break, uh, get away from them. And uh, we'll radio this convoy in, see if there's any other U-boat captains in the area who could potentially have a pop at them as well. But yeah, yeah, we're going to slowly sneak away this way. Okay, we come up to periscope depth sometime later. Um, we just had reports. And there's still aircraft in the area, so we can't <laughs> surface the boat. However, oh, there they are. What's that? That's um, is it one of the ferry? Is it ferry battle? No, the ferry battles were early war, weren't they? I don't know what that is, but it looks like um, I might have to have a a search through my recon books to sort of identify that aircraft. It looks like um, something similar to a ferry battle. But obviously they haven't got an aircraft carrier anymore to land at. So if I were them, I would be heading home to uh, try and get back to uh, land and land, uh, back to, yeah, land and um, be able to actually oh, land the aircraft. But um, they seem to be adamant to complete their duty, bless them. Okay, there it is, right. Having a look at um, my recon book. You know, it, it does definitely look like a fairy. I don't think it's the Barracuda. The Barracuda is the fighter, isn't it? Now, that is definitely more... Um, it could be a Barracuda, but it's probably more likely to be the fairy former. Or maybe... No, the Firefly wasn't until much later. So I'm going to go for the fairy former. Um, which is a... It's, it's actually a... I class it as a heavy fighter but also used for recon and bombing so yeah it's either a Fulma or a uh, Barracuda so either way they've got no home anymore so um, they're little orphans we'll leave them to uh, run out of fuel and jump into the sea I guess meantime we're just going to continue we've got the snorkel up they might spot it but um, let's actually bring the periscope down a bit um, but we're going to continue on Okay, under the cover of darkness, we've been able to surface the boat and get some fresh air. We had the snorkel going anyway, but it's good to get um, full fresh fresh air and everything. Right, we've done a stock check. We've only got three torpedoes left. Now, um, the success that we've, we've had, we're going to start heading back to port. If we find any lone steamers, then we well, may well have a, a shot with the remaining three torpedoes. But I think we've got um, enough to get back home and be heroes for this patrol.
And three days later, on a triumphant return to home port, our captain, Hermann von Danningberg, is awarded the Knight's Cross with oak leaves. Uh, the oak leaves on the Knight's Cross decoration are awarded only to the best skippers with exceptional skills. It's very respectable decoration. So, back into debriefing. Um, confirmation then. To begin with, we sunk the Empire Defiance. The ship was registered in Great Britain and was carrying utilities from Halifax to Liverpool. Registered tonnage of 4,125 tonnes. The Empire Trumpet was sunk. This ship was registered in Great Britain and was carrying medical supplies from Liverpool to Freetown. Registered tonnage of 5,834 tonnes. And they were the only two merchant ships we actually um, sunk on this patrol. Um, so statistics. Tonnage sunk 9,959 tonnes because it only takes into consideration merchant tonnage. However... That is only a fraction of the story of this patrol. We're at sea for 16 days and 14 hours, and we travelled 6,779 kilometres. Uh, we had to sink. We had to reach the patrol area, which we did. We had to sink a minimum of 7,000 merchant tonnes, which we did. We have just under 10,000 tonnes. But the big story from this patrol is the loss of the Royal Navy's county-class cruiser London, HMS London, and the illustrious escort carrier Indomitable. That's why the band was playing. You know, to get a cruiser is one thing. To get a cruiser and an escort carrier is godlike <laughs> to these crews. You see, you hear these stories going around the taverns now. We will be heroes for weeks and months to come. We'll be in all the newspapers our faces will be splattered across the entire German-speaking world and probably the English-speaking world once they get reports of uh, who it was who sunk their uh, two precious warships. Fantastic. Well, I certainly think that deserves a little bit of time off for the crew. Um, two major capital ships of the Royal Navy sunk. The crew are heroes. They'll go and enjoy their moment of fame down the taverns with a good company from the tavern girls as well, I'm sure. They won't buy a meal or a drink for the next few weeks, for sure. Uh, we'll enjoy this moment because we know tomorrow could bring far worse challenges our way. And we'll have to face them head on. And we'll do that again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying the adventures of U552. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.